Okay, sorry about that. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday and happy Thanksgiving um, to you guys. I uh, hope you have a fantastic day tomorrow. I uh, appreciate uh, doing this a day early. We will be practicing tomorrow still, but um, once practice is over, we'll let everybody go home with their families. Um, excited about Saturday's game, obviously. Uh, we've talked a lot with our team about the history of the Cup, about the game itself, about all the things that go into rivalries in general, as well as specifically this one. And uh, as we lead um, our team into Tempe, we recognize that um, it's been a while since we've gotten a victory there. So we've got to play our best game on Saturday, and that's our expectation. Just get this out of the way. What's your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Uh, stuffing, no question. Also, um, you know, the, the game last year, you know, finally, you know, beating them and ending the season right. What did that win mean for your program and how did it set you guys up for this year? Well, um, you know, for me, it was the second one that we played in, right? I was in the other ones that the other five before that or so that we weren't winning. But uh, for us, it was a huge win for the program to get the cup here in Tucson. It was the first time, I believe, um, that the cup was here with Dr. Robbins, with Dave. Uh, that was a big deal. None of our players beat um, the team up north until last year, so that was big. And then uh, it kind of, you know, gave us a, we won two out of last three last year, and then we've been able to really now at this point in time win six of our last seven home games, um, using that one as the first one. And that was important as well. So all together, I would say uh, it was a nice, let's call it momentum push into this offseason. And we're excited now where we're at um, now week 12 of this year. You mentioned, Troy, and Brown. you mentioned the 13 guys that were on the roster for that 2020 game. This is going to be their last territorial cup. What have you seen from them this week so far? Um, well, I, so far practice has been very animated very heated, uh, a lot of fun to coach. Uh, we only had one practice in full pads yesterday. We'll be in pads today. And then um, we, we, had a really, we had a really good practice yesterday. I would expect to have a really good practice today. Um, we conditioned well yesterday. Our guys are in a good place mentally, physically, emotionally. And um, those 13 guys, I know it means something too. And then we'll see. Uh, I'm sure it means something to all 110, though. Brian uh, Two things. One, uh, is there any uh, plans on going beyond just white uniforms? Has there been a talk of doing like a, a color versus color? Yeah, I don't know what we're wearing. I don't know what we're wearing. Maybe white and red. But I don't know. Maybe white on white. I'm not sure. I think it is white on white. Okay. It is white on white, yeah. And um, last year, um, there was some, some fans were a little upset to see. Uh, a large section of ASU fans in the middle of the student section. Does, do you guys have any say on where tickets are at the opposing uh, team's field? Yeah, no, we don't. Um, I don't know how that happened. I remember that last year. They must have bought them, you know, on StubHub or whatever it might have been. Uh, no, and as we, we talked about that Colorado game where our fans were almost, they were actually almost not in the stadium. So they can put you wherever they want to put you. They can block it out, um, I believe, any way they want to do it. Uh, I would imagine at this game they don't really put us in the best seats would be my guess. Uh, I don't remember where, where we sat two years ago. That was a, two years ago was a whole another world, felt like. So um, I'm not sure we're going to have great seats. That would be my prediction. But um, hopefully we'll be able to play well. I have two questions. What, what are, the, I guess, just the core principles of, of the way that you, you want your wide receivers to block uh, in the passing game, especially on, on those edge passes that you guys you know, throw and are so successful with? Is there, is there a, you know, a, somewhere where that originated, the concepts of how, how, how you want that to take, take place? Yeah, well, back in the day, let's call it 2009, when I was the offensive coordinator in Minnesota, and then Miami after that, we used to cut on the perimeter all the time. And that was a big part of our perimeter screens. We would always go for the legs. We would always cut. Um, you can't do that anymore. So we had to reevaluate how we were going to block those perimeter screens. Um, we had to take a different approach. We had, a we had to take a different 
We used to cut and go outside. Now we kick out and go inside. Um, so it's kind of a different approach. I know Montana's was outside. It was a great job by Jacob. But uh, for the most part, you got to fit it up right. You got to be willing. You got to keep your feet running the whole time. You can't ever uh, stop your feet because that's how injuries will occur. And then you got to, you know, be able to run them into the sideline if you can. You got to get your hands inside. And you've got to do a tremendous job of making sure that if you're going to hit those perimeter screens, um, the timing of those screens, it starts with the ball placement. You got to have the ball, you know, what I would say, one foot in front of the front shoulder pad. You got to be able to turn up when you catch it. And then you got to be able to make sure that, uh, you know, the kick out block is successful. To that moment last year in the tunnel after the game, Ricky hands you the trophy. I mean, just what you were feeling in that moment, right? Yeah, you know, it was really important for Ricky to have it first. I was more, I was happier for him that he got a chance to hold the trophy. And he said that meant the world to him. And then, uh, yeah, when he handed it to me, that was pretty amazing. Um, you know, these games mean a ton. There's a lot of work involved. Now, last year, there was a lot of emotion because it was the last game of the year. And I felt like we were turning the corner. And I think that my elation at that moment had a lot to do with just feeling like the program was turning not just the one victory but uh it's a super cool moment when you get to hold the trophy up and uh, when you get to hold the rivalry trophy up that means a ton to the state of Arizona uh we've been able to really do a fantastic job of recruiting the state of Arizona owning the state of Arizona I don't think there's any question about that um you know the, the best players in Arizona either come to Arizona or they leave Arizona so um, that's been a good, it's been a good sign moving forward that we'll continue to recruit that area, th those areas at the highest level. So Kenny Dillingham has had a lot of injuries to deal with this year, especially at the quarterback position. I'm sure you can relate to that from your first year here. What are just the biggest challenges that he faces in the situation that he's in? And, and can you relate at all to kind of maybe being in that kind of year zero mode? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I think year zero is different when you come off of a nine touchdown defeat versus a team that's been to bowl games four out of five years or four out of six years. And, um, we were on a 12-game losing streak here when we got here. It was a little bit different situation. I would say um, I don't know their scenario. Uh, it sounds like Jaden Rashada is back, so I'm sure they're excited about that. Um, it seems like their running back's back, so – I think it's always a challenge when you deal with injuries. It's always a challenge when you deal with um, trying to put in a new culture and establish it how you want it to be. And I think that's what he's trying to do there. Um, I think he's coming in uh, or coming from working for some of the best coaches that I know. Dan Lanning did a fantastic job. You look at Mike Norvell and what he's done at Florida State. You look at Gus Malzahn, who I have the utmost respect for. I mean, those are the guys he's worked for. So he's putting in his culture based upon the experiences he's had with them along with his own beliefs. And I think that injuries are part of the game. It feels like always that first year it happens more. I don't know why. But uh, maybe you're just trying to figure out your program and figure out who you're going to play with and you're more apt to make changes with people. But uh, I think his team's pretty healthy right now. And, um, you know, they've won two out of the last four games, uh, beat Washington State, beat UCLA, and uh, we know we've got to work cut out for us. They've utilized the swing gate, I guess you'd call it, um, as a way to sort of offset their quarterback injuries or just throw some wrinkles at the opposition. How do you – what's the best approach defensively if they start doing stuff like that? Well, Michael, should we give them the game plan? Uh, I would say I think what you've got to do is you've got to be able to align to execute. That would be my answer to that question. You have to, if they're going to give you unique formations or be able to, let's say, um, try to find mismatches, which is what those formations try to do, you need to align to execute your defense. And that means you've got to find who's eligible, who's not eligible, who can go out on a route, who can't. You know, what plays do they run from those formations? What's the best way to match up in those formations and make sure that you keep everything in front of you? The biggest concern you have is when plays go behind you. 
So you've got to, if teams are going to try to get you in those formations, you've got to be able to at least balance it out, manage it, and, and stay, I would say, stay in neutral in, that, in those situations. I believe uh, the first time Trey and Stukes played defensive back in a game was the, the game in, in 2020. Uh, what have you seen from him over the last few years, and what has he meant to the rise of the program? Well, uh, he's a captain. We brought him to our uh, we brought him to media day. He's probably one of the best players on our football team. He's gained, I think, 18 pounds since that day. Um, you know, December of 2020. Uh, I think he's up to like 196 pounds right now. I think he played in that game at 178, 176, something to that effect. Uh, he's made a huge play on the ball the other day, but every day he is, in a, he is an elite practice player. I would say he's probably the best practice player we have, or one of. Uh, he is, uh, runs to the ball on every play. He controls the huddle. He makes sure that we get lined up properly. He is uh, somebody that can play all positions. He can play nickel, he can play corner, he can play safety. And uh, he's just done a fantastic job for us. Uh, and I think as he continues to grow one more year, um, he'll be an elite DB in this league or the Big 12 league, I guess. Finally, David. Jim, uh, former Ohio State coach Jim Trussell used to always have this mindset that, yeah, we might be playing Iowa this week or Illinois or Minnesota, but we're always thinking about Michigan at the end. Do you prescribe to that type of thinking where, I mean, he did it to the point where he would have a Michigan period every day in brackets. Yeah. Where they would do something devoted to that game. I just wanted to see your thoughts on that kind of process and, and, and building up to this week. No, I don't. I, uh, I believe every weekend is a championship opportunity. Every weekend, every game uh, is the most important game. And, um, and then the next game is the most important game. So this is a huge game. This is a rivalry game. This has a uniqueness about it emotionally. But regarding our preparation on a weekly basis, it's all for the opponent that we are preparing for that week. And um, my, I'm not, I don't have the capacity to be able to think of two games or two teams every week. I, it takes uh, all of me each week. And, uh, you know, Sunday's my recovery. Uh, moment before I have to go back and focus again on the next week's opponent. So all of my brain power is right now on the team up north. Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a great day.